In this video, I will show you how to integrate sine squared x and also cosine squared x. And the reason I put them in one video is because a lot of students will just do the following. Yes, we look at sine squared x and think about which identity that we can use. And perhaps the most famous one is, look at this as 1 minus cosine squared x. And let's just go ahead and integrate that. Can we do this? Sure, we can integrate 1, but how do we integrate cosine square x? Maybe you have to do this one first then, huh? Alright, then if we look at cosine square x, then what identity can we use? 1 minus sine square x. Oh my god. <laughs> we will just go back to the first one, right? So you see, this is actually not the identity that we want to use. Because we'll just go back and forth. Ideally speaking, we want to have sine to the first power or cosine to the first power when we integrate. So check this out. When we have sine squared x, we can actually use this one. Let me write it down right here for you guys. Uh, sine squared, and let me use theta just in case sometimes you may have more things inside. But this right here is equal to 1 half times 1 minus cosine, and the input here is 2 theta. And the beauty of this is that this is cosine to the first power. Similarly, let me also tell you guys the identity right here. Cosine squared theta, this is equal to 1 half. It's very similar to that one. It's just 1, but plus cosine of 2 theta. So, you pretty much, once you finish this, you pretty much know the other one, right? So, let's go ahead and finish this. This is just the integral, and then we can put this in here. But of course, the original question is using x, so we keep using x. So let me just put down the 1 half, maybe all the way in the front. And then we have the 1 minus cosine of 2x. And then dx dot at the end, of course. And now let's integrate. 1 half is all the way in the front, and open the parentheses for the result of the integration. Integrating 1 in the x world, we get x, and then bring down the minus. Integrating cosine to the first power, we get positive sine. Yeah, because the derivative of sine is cosine, and then this negative stays right here, right? And then the input right here stays the same, because the derivative of 2x is just the number 2. But remember, when we're integrating, we will have to divide it by the number, the derivative which we can just put on one half right here. And keep in mind, we can only do this if the derivative of the inside is just a number. So that's what we did. And that's pretty much it. And of course, we can just multiply this out. So finally, you can see that 1 half x and then minus 1 over 4, and then we have sine of 2x. And finally, this is the place I will put a plus c just at the very end when I am presenting the answer, just like that. So for the second one right here, go ahead and do the same thing, right? One half in the front, and then one plus cosine of 2x. Yes, both of them are cosine 2 theta, and then this is just plus and this is minus, right? All right, and then just finish this, this is one half, and then this is one, I mean, this is x. And you bring down the plus, integrating cosine, we get sine, same thing, you write that down. And don't forget to divide it by the derivative right here, which is the number, just one half like this. And finally, we get one half x plus one fourth sine of 2x. And we are all done, so put a plus c right here. Right? So if you need more help with integrations, you guys can check out my other videos, and you guys can also subscribe for future math help. And that's it.